1828, an English botanist by the name of Robert Brown published a pamphlet entitled A Brief Account of Microscopical Observations. In his pamphlet, he pointed out a strange rapid oscillatory motion that grains of pollen were undergoing when he suspended them in water. Upon taking a closer look at the pollen grains, he found the presence of smaller particles, known today as amyloplasts, suspended in them. This led him to compare the motions between living and non-living pollen grains suspended in water, thinking that maybe the living pollen was undergoing this oscillatory motion and the non-living pollen wasn't. To his surprise though, all pollen grains were moving in this way. Brown continued his experiments, reducing both organic and inorganic compounds to a fine powder and suspending them in water, and found that all of these particles still underwent this same strange motion. His conclusion that he published was that all matter reduced to tiny particles had this trait, and the phenomenon later came to be known as Brownian motion in his name. Nearly 80 years later, at the turn of the 20th century, French doctoral student Louis Bachelier published his doctoral thesis entitled The Theory of Speculation. Although this thesis had primarily a huge mathematical impact on the study of finance, it was a revolutionary paper because it was the first mathematical model of Brownian motion, showing how it is a stochastic process, meaning randomly determined. By 1900, the nature of Brownian motion was quite reasonably understood as essentially a random process, but still, its cause remained a mystery. Attempts to explain the phenomenon were made independently by three scientists, William Sutherland in 1904, Albert Einstein in 1905, and Marianne Smolikowski in 1906. In their papers, they suggested that Brownian motion was a result of unseen water molecules colliding with these larger particles and pushing them around in the solution they were in. Since each water molecule has a different speed and therefore a different amount of momentum and can come from any direction, each collision would have a different effect on the suspended particle, causing it to move in a seemingly random motion throughout the solvent over time. Sutherland and Einstein suggested that the suspended particles obeyed the established gas laws of the time and proposed an equation that relates the amount of motion a suspended spherical particle undergoes to a time coefficient and also to what they called a diffusion coefficient. This equation that models diffusion of spherical particles through a liquid is known today as the Stokes-Einstein-Sutherland equation. A century-old debate was still going on in the scientific community at this time, which caused some backlash for this proposed theory regarding Brownian motion. The proposal of atoms and molecules comprising all physical matter was clashing with another movement known as energeticism which stated that energy was the ultimate form of all physical reality. Due to these clashing theories, the papers published explaining Brownian motion received mixed reviews, with the so-called energeticists rejecting the theory entirely. To further cement his ideas and explore the topic in more detail, Einstein himself published a second paper on Brownian motion later in 1908, going as far as to even suggest a way to validate his theory experimentally. The very next year, French physicist Jean-Baptiste Perron would do just that, verifying Einstein's theories and cementing particle theory. Perron's validation of the particle theory explaining Brownian motion revolved around calculating Avogadro's number, a constant defined as the number of particles per mole. Perron, being thorough, used a multitude of ways to calculate this constant, including one relating to the aforementioned diffusion relation. This relation uses what is called a mean squared displacement to represent the deviation of position with respect to time. It is calculated after measuring the position of a point, in this case, a suspended particle at specific steps of time. After taking measurements, the mean square displacement is calculated by taking the distance in space the point has traveled in each step of time, squaring it, adding up these values for each time step, and dividing by the number of steps taken. Perron, along with Joseph Schodesig, who worked in Perron's lab, experimentally calculated mean square displacements for suspended particles of gamboge and mastic. Using a primitive projector called a camera lucida, they traced the paths of about 200 singular grains. 
Then, using known values for viscosity, temperature, and radius of each particle, Perrin solved the mean squared displacement relation formulated by Sutherland and Einstein and measured the value of the Boltzmann constant. He then took the definition for the ideal gas constant using the previously known values for the constant itself and the now calculated Boltzmann constant and solved for Avogadro's number. Using this method, along others, Perron arrived at a value of Avogadro's number of 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole, a value still extremely close to today's accepted value. Perron and Chaudezeig's experimental work was monumental, for it essentially settled the debate over the physical nature of our universe. It verified Sutherland, Einstein, and Smolachowski's theories, and thereby confirmed the atomic nature of matter. Perron won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1926 for his work on the discontinuous structure of matter, and especially for his discovery of sedimentation equilibrium. The story of Brownian motion is certainly a fascinating one, as it led to significant advancements not only in the field of physics, but the models invented to explain it also ended up having significant value towards the fields of mathematics, statistics, and finance. The centuries-old mystery received contributions from many different scientists and mathematicians, and because of this phenomenon, we have reached a much more in-depth understanding of our physical reality and its particle-like nature. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.